Good morning, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the Applied UV 3Q 2022 Financial Results Conference Call. At this time, all participants have been placed on a listen-only mode, and we will open the floor for your questions and comments after the presentation. It is now my pleasure to turn the floor over to your host, Brett Moss. Sir, the floor is yours. Thank you. Once again, welcome to Applied UV's third quarter 2022 earnings call. With me on the call today are John Andrews, Chief Executive Officer, Mike Riccio, Chief Financial Officer, and Max Munn, Founder and President of Applied UV CEO of Munworks. As a reminder, all materials for today's live presentation are available on the company's investor relations website at appliedUV.com. Before we begin, please take a moment to read the forward-looking statements in our earnings press release. During today's call, we'll make certain predictive statements that reflect our current views about future performance and financial results. We base these statements on certain assumptions and expectations on future events that are subject to risks and uncertainties. Our most recent Form 10-K lists some of the most important risk factors that could cause actual results to differ from our prediction. With that, I'll turn the call over to John Andrews. Thank you, Brett, and good morning, everyone. It's a pleasure to be with you today to review the results of our third quarter and provide an update on our business. Our financial results for the third quarter include revenue of $5.9 million, roughly in line with prior quarter, and up 65% year over year primarily as a result of our acquisition of the factory operations of a 100,000 square foot manufacturing facility in Brooklyn, New York. We expect our operating margins to improve as we move beyond certain one-time expenses and continue to take advantage of synergies and cost reduction measures. We continue to invest in marketing and sales and other growth initiatives while at the same time following a disciplined capital allocation process. Company-wide, our pipeline of qualified opportunities continues to increase and is considerably higher than it was just a quarter ago, indicating a strong foundation for future growth in both the disinfection and hospitality segments. The hospitality segment alone has new purchase orders already on hand for shipment in first half of 2023, exceeding 10 million. As a reminder, the disinfection segment includes the design, manufacture, assembly, and distribution of air purification and pathogen elimination systems for use in food and beverage, agricultural, education, government, healthcare, and the consumer market. The hospitality segment includes the manufacture of fine mirrors and furniture specifically for the hospitality industry. Now let me turn this call over to Max Munn founder and CEO of Munworks to review our hospitality segment. Thanks, John. In hospitality, the industry continues to show strong growth fueled by the post-pandemic travel surge, which all of us are aware of, which has accelerated faster than most forecast. This market growth has heightened the need for hotels to make capital improvements to meet these increasing market dynamics, creating high demand for a hospitality offering. Additionally, mandatory property renovations were deferred due to the pandemic, but are now contractually required to start. In hospitality, our revenue grew by more than 145% in the third quarter, which included both contribution from recent factory, from our recent factory acquisition and organic growth resulting from the fulfillment of orders deferred during the pandemic. As a reminder, this is a manufacturing facility with state-of-the-art equipment in a 100,000 square foot Brooklyn, New York facility that manufactures both wood and metal furniture for the hospitality industry. This acquisition expands our product offering for the hospitality industry as well as providing us with economies of scale as we integrate this facility into Munworks. As part of the acquisition, we inherited a number of lower margin projects, which were paid for in advance of our acquisition, leaving us with the job of fulfilling these major commitments without the benefit of the deposits or the associated cash receipts. We delivered on those commitments, retained the clients, and all of the legacy orders have now been fulfilled. With those orders behind us, we expect gross margins in hospitality to return to more normalized levels beginning this quarter. 
This recent factory acquisition provides us with a U.S.-based manufacturing facility creating strong competitive advantages for us given the demand for domestic manufacturing in the hotel space. There is increasing concern over the reliability of Chinese suppliers as evidenced by the recent shutdown of Apple's factory in China, which makes the iPhone. The cost differential between China and domestic manufacturing has narrowed considerably. The 25% tariff that's currently in place is a major factor that leads hotel management to favor U.S.-based manufacturing. And this 25% tariff is not going away, certainly not soon. These factors are driving more hotel operators to domestic manufacturing to mitigate the supply chain delays and enable hotels to better manage project timelines and ultimately revenue generation. Our sales pipeline for hospitality, which is more than $10 million today, has increased over 300% in the last 90 days and includes new projects in Cleveland, Washington, D.C., Indianapolis, Orlando, and Knoxville. Now let me turn this back over to John, our CFO, our CEO, to discuss the disinfection segment. Thank you. Thanks, Matt. The global market for air purification and pathogen elimination is estimated to reach $24 billion by 2030. While we've seen orders temporarily delayed, air quality and disinfection remain a priority in our target verticals, and it's no longer just a nice to have, but a necessity to keep people safe and healthy, as well as protect and extend the life of high-value agricultural produce, including cannabis. Our diverse portfolio of patented, proprietary, and research-backed air purification solutions address the growing demand for air purification and pathogen elimination across ever-increasing use cases and verticals. In third quarter, we experienced some market weakness due to the current macroeconomic uncertainty, with revenues down 12% as orders were delayed to the next several quarters in our major verticals, including healthcare, food preservation, cannabis, education, and government. These prospects are delaying capital expenditures until they get a better sense of the economic situation, both domestically and internationally. Importantly, however, the feedback we are receiving from these prospects indicates orders are merely being delayed and projects have not been canceled. Again, we anticipate these sales cycles to close in the next quarter or two. An example of the delayed major purchase is with DA International, one of our U.S. distributor partners, where we have been included in a multi-million dollar EANS-2 contract, which includes our suite of aeroside air purification solutions in its offering to 700 non-public schools throughout the state of Washington. This contract award, as well as other major air purification RFPs we are participating, demonstrates the growing demand in education for improved air quality. School closures have had a profound negative impact on students. Our products provide a pathway to keeping schools open and protecting teachers, students, and staff. Importantly, this is a condition we are seeing across the air disinfection industry and is not unique to applied UV. Despite this headwind, we are highly encouraged by the performance of the new sales professionals we recently hired. They are building momentum, identifying new opportunities, managing more prospects, and moving sales towards closing. In fact, three of the new hires in the disinfection segment have already generated revenue in the first 60 days of employment. While we have seen a number of orders delayed, we achieved significant growth in two of our target verticals, wine and cannabis. Wine sales in Q3 were up 95% over Q2, and cannabis sales were up by almost 50% for that same period. This sales growth in two of our target verticals reinforces our aeroside patented photocatalytic oxidation efficacy in completely trapping and destroying mold, pathogen, and volatile organic compounds without the emissions of ozone or harmful chemicals. Additionally, one of our largest customers increased their purchases of our proprietary and patented PCO air purification catalyst technology by over 40% quarter two to quarter three. 
Internationally, our European distribution partner, Solarius, placed a substantial order for Aeroside during the third quarter, expanding our presence in wine, cannabis, and food preservation verticals in Europe. Solarius has been one of our European distributors of Aeroside for more than eight years, selling Aeroside to multiple verticals. We also made a significant sale to hospitals in Southeast Asia through our distribution partner. Airside air purification systems for hospitals offer great value due to its filterless technology and environment-friendly properties, as well as its efficacy in pathogen elimination using our NASA-based PCO technology. We expect continued demand for Airside in the coming months in Pakistan, Indonesia, and Vietnam. As another major business development opportunity initiated this corner was with Mount Sai Medical Center, where we're installing our patented lumicide surface and drain UVC disinfection solutions initially in 16 patient rooms. This initial installation supports a trial that is being conducted to further validate the independent research previously conducted by Resinova Laboratories. Mount Sinai, a premier globally recognized and respected teaching institution, plans to publish the clinical results of this initial installation early next year. We fully expect very favorable outcomes, which we believe will further validate the previously published independent results and position us for greater adoption of our patented surface and drain disinfection solutions in additional healthcare and other facilities globally to combat and eliminate surface transmitted viruses such as monkeypox. As stated earlier, we continue to grow our sales pipeline for the disinfection segment, both domestically and internationally. Domestically, we invested in talent acquisition of three proven sales executives who have already generated sales. Internationally, efforts to expand our network of distributor partners to increase sales and product throughput continues. Our distribution channels include global leaders such as 360 Biopharma in Africa, Solarius in Europe, and Jaro in Latin America, among others. We continue to seek new distribution partners to grow our global distribution beyond our base of 60 plus distributor partners to enable us to cost effectively increase our global customer footprint beyond the current 52 countries. We continue to make investments in marketing having launched an international multi-pronged targeted marketing program in the second quarter aimed at key vertical markets initially focused on cannabis, food preservation and wine. We continue to strong marketing push in Q3 with exhibits at a number of major trade shows throughout the U.S., Europe, and UAE. These included two that focused on food preservation, the Feeding America Unite trade show in Philadelphia in August, and the Global Produce and Floral trade show in Orlando in October. Each of these trade shows brings together buyers, thought leaders, and subject matter experts from around the world, making these ideal for sales lead generation. Warm sales leads generated from these two food-related trade shows exceeded 75. We are also exhibiting at the large cannabis trade show and expo, MJ Biz in Las Vegas, which kicks off today. MJ BizCon attracts more than 35,000 cannabis executives and staffers from around the world who represent plant growing operations, making it a target-rich environment for us to educate industry professionals about our products and generate sales leads for our important cannabis vertical. Internationally, we just completed exhibiting along with our distributor partner, Bata Technologies, at the Gulf Food and Beverage Trade Show in Dubai, which includes over 4,000 companies from more than 120 countries. The results of this trade show is impressive, as we now have well over 150 new end user and distribution partner leads to follow up with. This week, we are also exhibiting in the European healthcare trade show, Medica, with our distribution partner. Medica, which kicked off yesterday, is a world forum for medicine being held in Dusseldorf. Medica is a globally leading medical trade show that will host thousands of participants to learn about trending topics in healthcare where our air and surface purification solutions have a strong fit. From an R&D perspective, We continue to make substantial improvements to our entire line of mobile and fixed air purification products, further differentiating our patented PCO and UVC carbon-based systems from that of other technologies. 
Our transition to adding Internet of Things integration proceeds on plan. Additionally, we are expanding our product portfolio, introducing two new HEPA-based air purification units, which we are already including in multi-million dollar bids. In addition to these new air purification systems, we also have plans to introduce our lumicide surface and drain UVC disinfection solutions following completion of the current pilot at Mount Sinai Medical Center. I should also mention two other very important field tests we are getting ready to launch. The first is with our aeroside product, specifically for the eradication and elimination of aspergillus. Aspergillus is very prevalent in cannabis facilities and poses a significant health risk as it can contaminate the cannabis itself, make it an unsafe for consumers, as well as posing a health problem to staff when breathing these mold spores. The second field test is related to carbon dioxide elimination using our scientific air product in wineries. While CO2 is an essential odorless gas for the production of wine, it also poses a safety hazard for employees to the extreme of being lethal. While our in-house testing has proven to be highly effective in both scenarios, as with all our product claims, we field test thoroughly using third parties. The positive results we expect from both tests will further expand our use cases for both the aeroside and scientific air products in cannabis and wine. Operationally across both business segments, we continue to analyze each of the points in our supply chain to tighten integration, to optimize inventory, improve quality control, and mitigate against supply chain, chain re disruptions that are so prevalent in our world today. Along those lines, we have signed and will be announcing soon a significant strategic manufacturing and supply chain outsourcing agreement with one of the premier global contract manufacturers. The agreement makes them the primary manufacturer, assembler, and logistical authority for applied UV suite of air purification solutions. Additionally, they have offered to finance our supply chain based on purchase orders received. Our joint teams are executing an accelerated plan so the transfer of the majority of these responsibilities occur before year end and allow us to close our internally operated manufacturing and distribution. We believe this partnership will translate into production and logistics cost savings and accelerated development of our next generation products, removing manufacturing execution risk and allowing the company to more effectively scale and focus solely on marketing and sales. Another major st positive strategic action we've taken is entering into a non-binding LOI with a privately held strategic acquisition target with a current revenue run rate for this year of approximately 18 million. Many months of discussion and evaluation have been conducted, evaluating the multitude of synergies that will accrue to the combined entity. The teams have engaged in integration planning and due diligence, including all required audits. We expect the combined entity will substantially increase revenues approaching 50 million in 2023. Additionally, we will gain distribution and sales capabilities while also expanding our product lines, which will allow us to increase our addressable market. These synergies will be accretive to our goal of being cash flow positive in the near term. Next, I will turn the call over to Mike Riccio, our Chief Financial Officer, for a review of our financial results. Mike? Thanks, Sean. <clears throat> Before I review the results for the quarter, I'd like to highlight two items that occurred subsequent to quarter end. First, on October 7th, 2022, the company executed an unsecured redeemable promissory note with Streeterville Capital LLC for a net amount of $2.5 million, maturing in 18 months and bearing interest at 8% per annum. Second, on October 28, 2022, the company was fully vetted and approved by Pinnacle Bank for a $5 million non-dilutive asset-based line of credit. We anticipate closing subject to customary negotiations and conditions either later this week or early next week. I highlight these items because they improve our liquidity position after the end of the third quarter and provide us with the runway to continue to pursue our growth objectives. Having said that, net sales for the third quarter of 2022 were $5.9 million, an increase of $2.3 million, or 65.4%, compared to $3.6 million for the third quarter of 2021. This increase was attributable to the hospitality segment, 
which increased by $2.5 million primarily as a result of the fulfillment of orders that were delayed from Q2, plus the addition of the orders fulfilled from the Vision Mark acquisition, offset by a decrease of $208,000 in the disinfection segment, primarily due to the push out of orders into the next two quarters. Gross profit decreased by $213,000, or 20.2%, to $839,000 in the third quarter of 2022, down from $1.1 million in the third quarter of 2021. The reduction was driven by the decrease in sales in the disinfection segment and the higher sales mix of the hospitality segment at a lower gross profit. The lower hospitality gross profit is driven primarily by the cost required to complete projects that were in process from the VisionMark acquisition and additional costs to integrate and absorb the VisionMark operations. We expect hospitality pricing and margins to improve in Q4 as we are now focused on new projects with more attractive margin profiles. Furthermore, we continue to integrate our strategic acquisitions and capturing cost reduction synergies from the consolidation and streamlining of the manufacturing and distribution operations which we believe will drive further improvement in margins going forward. SG&A expense for the third quarter of 2022 increased to $3.5 million as compared to $2.7 million in the prior quarter. This increase of $822,000 was driven primarily by the expansion of the disinfection segment with the additional acquisitions of Kess and Sire, the expansion of the hospitality segment with the addition of VisionMark acquisition, and corporate segment expenses due to increased consulting, legal, accounting, and infrastructure costs related to the initial integration of the operations of our strategic acquisitions. SG&A costs did decrease $526,000 from last quarter, and we anticipate further efficiency gains in the coming year as we fully integrate our acquisitions and leverage synergies where practical. Net loss for the third quarter of 2022 was $2.7 million, compared to a net loss of $1.1 million for the third quarter of 2021. The increase in net loss was mainly due to the reduction in gross profit and the increase in SG&A costs, as mentioned earlier. Additionally, the company had realized a gain last year of $297,000 due to the forgiveness of a payroll protection program loan. Moving forward, we anticipate improvements in gross profit as the initial vision mark projects are now completed and also as the disinfection sales pipeline accelerates revenue realization. On a non-GAAP basis, adjusted EBITDA was a loss of $2.1 million for the third quarter of 2022, which compares to an adjusted EBITDA loss of $1.0 million in the year-ago quarter. We use adjusted EBITDA to assist in analyzing our operating performance by removing the impact of certain key items that we believe do not directly reflect our underlying operations. Adjusted EBITDA is defined as operating profit or loss, excluding depreciation and amortization, and excluding stock-based compensation and loss on impairment of goodwill. Lastly, we ended the quarter with approximately 1.1 million of unrestricted cash on our balance sheet. This compares to 3.1 million at the end of the second quarter and does not include any funding from the two debt transaction, financing transactions I mentioned earlier, as these will both strengthen our liquidity position in Q4. I will now turn the call back over to John for closing remarks. Thank you, Mike. We will continue to invest in our strategic priorities while at the same time tightening expenses across the rest of our business, aligning our resources with the current market demand. We are optimistic about the long-term outlook for both our disinfection and hospitality businesses. We have a portfolio of highly effective products that directly address commercial demands and we believe will be strong growth levers in the periods ahead. Thank you again, everyone, for joining our call today. This concludes our prepared remarks. Operator, we can open the call for questions. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, the floor is now open for questions. If you have any questions or comments, please press star one on your touchtone phone at this time. Pressing star two will remove you from the queue should your question be answered. And lastly, while posing your question, please pick up your handset if listening on speakerphone to provide optimum sound quality. Please hold while we poll for questions. Once again, that's star one if you have a question or a comment. First question is coming from Chip Moore with EF Hutton. Please proceed. 
Uh, morning. Hey, thanks for taking the question, everybody. Um, I guess I want to start just disinfection um, segment. So some of the order delays you talked about, maybe if you could expand on on what you're seeing there. Is this, you know, I know you called out sort of sort of macro uncertainty. Is this a situation where maybe we need to get through, you, you know, year end budgetary cycles? You know, it sounds like the pipeline is strong and um, you know, you're fairly confident there, but just curious when you might get better visibility on, on sort of order timing in that segment. Good question, Chip. Thanks for the question. The, what we've seen with uh, a number of prospects across multiple verticals, it hasn't been focused just on one vertical. I mentioned uh, one client in education. We had another uh, $600,000 client uh, move an order into Q1 just because of their capital budgeting process. So we're seeing it uh, both domestically and internationally. Uh, in fact, internationally, we have seen in Europe almost seven and a half million dollars of bids and um, orders moved out into next year. And part of the reason why we can't tell you exactly when those orders are going to be booked is it's going to all hinge on how fast Europe recovers from both the Ukraine, Ukraine situation as well as the economy. But what we're, what, what we're really enlightened by and confident by is these orders are just being pushed and delayed. They're not being canceled. And so uh, we think that quarter one, quarter two, many of these orders will be fulfilled. Got it. That's very helpful. Um, and then if I, if I could ask and, and switch up uh, to, to hospitality, nice to see this sort of, uh, you know, snap back and, and uh, demand accelerating. Um, just curious, you know, you, you talked about obviously vision mark and, and having to, to sort of eat some margin there and, and doing the right thing. Uh, how do we think about margins, you know, kind of normalized moving forward, uh, particularly with that Brooklyn facility since that's new? And it sounds like you have some other other things you're working on. Just just if you could kind of remind us how we should think about that. Would you? Uh, this is Max Mann. Let me respond to that. The the normalized budgets that we're looking for, the margins that we're looking for rather, are in the high 20s and low 30s. Uh, we're uh, we're seeing enormous demand, and the struggle that we have, frankly, is that we can't get enough labor right now that's the constraining factor it's not capital mm -hmm. it's not demand we've got we're now starting to put uh, uh feelers out to schools and technical uh institutions that might assist us in getting labor so that's the constraining factor right now um even with that we expect uh the six uh, million quarterly run rate to uh to continue to increase, uh, primarily because we're raising our pricing. Because if we can't meet all of our demand, we might as well offset some of that by uh, increasing margin and increasing uh, pricing. The, the concern that hospitality hotel developers has have is, uh, for, for example, a typical 200-room hotel, three-star hotel, might cost 10 to 12 million to get above the ground, uh, the the furniture, fixtures, equipment, the case goods, the furniture uh, uh, might constitute a million and a half dollars of that. So it's maybe 15 or 20 percent of most. So even with higher pricing in the U.S., which is the gap is narrowing, as I explained earlier, you're talking about a, 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 let's say a 20 percent difference between landed China and U.S. shipment on maybe a million and a half dollars worth of uh, case goods, you're talking about a two, three hundred thousand dollar differential. That's two or three percent on a ten million dollar project. So a hotel developer is not going to put the opening of a hotel at risk or the quality of what he's getting at risk to save two or three hundred thousand dollars on a ten, twelve million dollar project. That's what we're seeing more and more of. The reason that switch to, hosp to domestic manufacturing hasn't happened earlier is there's no uh, manufacturing base for hotel furniture in this country. There's, there's maybe four or five guys, and 
they're all uh, uh, as booked as we are. And the the lead time to build a facility, get the equipment, much of it coming from Europe, and uh, get the trained staff is north of two years. So we've got a long road in front of us that looks extremely uh, promising. I hope I've answered your question, Chip. Yeah, no, that's helpful, Max. Um, appreciate it. And maybe one last one. Um, the, the LOI you, you talked about, I think it was an $18 million run rate. Any more uh, detail you can give us on, you know, where that, that target uh, might play and uh, how we should think about potential timing and, and uh, financing. Is that covered with some of the moves you made post-quarter, or, or how should we think about that? Sure. Thanks, everybody. John, John, John let, let me answer that, uh, if you don't mind. Uh, Chip, the, the, uh, it's, we're scheduled to close, uh, barring something unforeseen, prior to year-end. The audits are on their, on their way uh, to completion. We haven't seen any uh, speed bumps. The uh, two raises that uh, Mike Riccio, uh, debt raises that Mike Riccio outlined, uh, are not earmarked for this acquisition. The two debt raises are for uh, giving us the runway we need uh, and the certainty that we need to execute on our organic growth. The acquisition will be funded substantially by seller paper. So we don't expect uh, any significant dilution or issuance of common uh, to finance this. And by the way, it's highly synergistic. It's in the disinfection space. They've got distribution to verticals that uh, Sterilumin and Applied UV are not in. Got it. Perfect. That's what I was looking for. Okay. I'll take the rest of mine offline. Thanks, everybody. Thanks, Chip. Once again, if you have a question or a comment, please press star 1 on your touchtone phone at this time. That's star 1 if you have a question or a comment. Okay, we currently have no questions in queue. I'd like to turn it back to management for closing remarks. Again, we'd just like to thank everyone for your attendance today and all your support moving forward. Thank you again, and have a great day. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. This does conclude today's conference call. You may disconnect your phone lines at this time, and have a wonderful day. Thank you for your participation.